Welcome back to Squash Fit, brought to you by England Squash. This is the second of our series to help you guys all get back on court and get back enjoying the game you love. We're going to use all of our expertise and our resources to help you come back so you can manage your body, you can reduce any risk of injury, and you can really thrive on the squash board court. Come back stronger than you actually left it before. So our guests have included Nick Matthew already. We've got Laura Massaro tonight. We've obviously got people like Sarah Jane Perry, Nathan Wells, our strength and conditioning guru. We've got all sorts coming up. So we're going to use everything with, that we possibly have. There's also some nutritional tips that you can get on the Squash Fit Hub. And basically, I'm going to be here to guide you right the way through um, to take you from start to finish. You can do a lot of these first ones at home, but um, I reckon from about session four, you'll be advised to go on the squash court. It'll be much better there. Uh, we're going to run these live sessions every Monday and every Thursday. They're going to be about 45 minutes from six o'clock every single time. And you can sign up for them via Zoom link that we have. Or you can obviously go to the Squash Fit Hub with, and the link will be in the Zoom later. So there's going to be, um, if you've missed any of the sessions, you can catch up with them on demand. So you'll never have to worry about that. And obviously you can also repeat them and watch them over and over if you, you want to. Well, that's about it from me this evening with the introductions. Let's get on with the session. We're lucky enough to have a former world number one, a world champion, British Open champions. She really has managed to achieve it all. And a lot of that is down to the way she approaches the game, the way she thinks about it, the professionalism that she's brought into it. And Laura's going to look to do a session that builds on from what Nick did on Monday. So I think it's going to be really valuable. Um, I know, and I've seen these sessions in the past, and they're so good to, to help you with becoming robust as a player to prevent those injuries and to, to really help you perform. So I can't wait for this session, but I'm going to hand you over to Laura Massaro and um, hope you enjoy. Great. Thanks, Lee. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Can you hear me? Headphones? Uh, yep. Yeah, so as Lee said, I'm all part of the Squash Fit campaign and really happy to be proud of it, uh, part of it. And leading on from Nick's session, which I managed to watch and take part in last week, wanted to get on the right on the right vibe. So hopefully want to take everything that Nick did last week and um, reaffirm it, kind of run through sections of it again, just so that I can really, you know, kind of make sure that you guys are, are super clear on how important that warm up is. And then we're going to progress it on really slightly. Uh, as Lee said, this is supposed to be easing you back in nice and slowly, nice and light. So today's session is really not going to be very much impact. It's designed to, you know, work around the fundamental movements that are, you know, all part of the squash game. And um, I'm excited to take you through some of the exercises that I've done over my career. And um, so just as a general layout before I get going, I want to get all my talking out at the beginning. Um, I'm going to start us off with a glute circuit, mainly because, you know, it was a staple of mine through every, every week of my training. I think it's something that people have done with me before if we've ever done any training. So I think it's really handy to run through that. Then we're going to run through some of the exercises Nick did last week, which is uh, running through his ramp warm up. So three or four exercises was his suggestion to pick and do. So I've picked three of my favorite from his, um, activation, mobilization, and proprioception. And then we're going to head in to finish um, an 18 minute circuit, which is low level and designed for you to be able to push it to whatever level you want. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So if everybody can just come down onto a mat or onto your floor, hopefully you can see me. We're going to start with this glute circuit and we're going to do 30 seconds of each exercise. So we're going to start down laying on our side. Like heels should be in line with your bum, knees bent. Just rest your head on your arm. And we've got 30 seconds. And we're going to do what's called a glute clamp to start. So top leg just comes away from the bottom leg. As with all of these exercises, the main focus is to make sure that you're moving your leg 
by working the glute and not by sort of rocking your body backwards or um, using the front of your leg and your quad. So keep that going. We've got another five seconds. And from here, 30 up, straighten that top leg and just lift that away from the bottom leg. So it's just a straight leg raise. Going, just lifting up and down again, making sure you're really firing the top of the glute. No need to go super fast or super slow, just kind of really make sure that you're firing that glute up. And for anyone who hasn't done anything on court for three and a half months, like myself, you're going to probably start to feel this, I'd imagine, fairly soon. Next one, bottom leg stays the same, top leg touches down in front and then touches down behind. Laura, what did you find yep. that this gave you when you were playing? So the idea behind it was just to really activate the glutes up and um, really make sure that they were fired. Obviously, you know, you go into these movements on court, flying into the front corners, and you're asking your glutes to hold you in that position while you hit the ball. So this is a really good way to fire them up. Next up, straighten that top leg again, and we're going to do mini circles. So this... This was just, you know, kind of a staple of mine, really, working with Mark Campbell. He was really into two things, glute stability and core strength. I think that was from working with GB Boxing. Switch direction, guys. And uh, so super strong core, super strong glutes. And this was definitely part of it while I was playing. Good stuff. So that's two minutes. Let's flip over. Other side. And I think... This is a sort of exercise. Uh, let's just get going with this and then I'll talk. So back into our glute clam. So let's go. Um, the, first, the first thing with this is that um, you just want to make sure that you can feel it. So if a minute or a minute and a half, so three or three exercises is enough. If you can get up to, you know, kind of two and a half, three minutes per leg, perfect. But you don't want to be stiff from this or absolutely being killed and your glutes are hanging on by a thread okay we're going to go into a straight leg raise and then I'd probably be suggesting that two three times a week is ideal just to add in that little bit of strength and stability into those glute muscles that we all need so much on court yeah it really doesn't make well it doesn't take a long time to do but it makes a big difference doesn't it like you say not only just getting in and out of shots but because you can control the lunge then it means that you have the quality in the shot as well yeah definitely uh toe down toe behind yeah so it's it's about stability mobility a little bit of flexibility um all of those things really, which, you know, you need, you need a strong, stable base to be able to control the, to control your upper body and therefore control the ball. So, so the idea of this was just to run through after this, just go through some of Nick's stuff. Um, let's go into our mini circles, mainly because having spoken to a few of the guys at my club over the, over the years and even just the last few days, trying to explain to them the, the main two reasons for me why you would go through such an extensive warm up, And I know and understand not everybody has all of the time in the world, switch direction. And number one for me was injury prevention. You know, all of that stuff flying into the front corners, million miles an hour out of the court and stop there. So yeah, flying into the front corners, million miles an hour, um, making sure that you're warmed up and your body can actually do that, that you can throw the leg, that the adductors are warmed up, that everything is completely fired. And then from there, the second point is completely about uh, en enhancing performance. So, you know, we're all playing competitive squash, whether it's against a friend, a box league, a league match, a competition. At the end of the day, you want to perform at your best. So if you get out the car and go on and throw your leg, and you, you're short of the ball or you, you're tight and you can't quite get there, that influences and impacts your performance on the court. So if you want to perform well and you are, and you are competitive, you're putting yourself in that competitive situation, then, of course, this, this is the, se the second most important thing for me uh, in terms of warming up. So 
further on from there, we're just going to go into Nick's uh, activation. So we're going to do 30 seconds again of each piece of uh, his top three, my top three of his activation. So the first one I picked was our windscreen wipers. So 30 seconds, hands down behind, knees bent, just drop from one side to the other. So this is, again, adding in that mobility into the hips. You need to be from a standing position, down low into a lunge. That hip range needs to be loose. It needs to be able to get you in and out of a lunge. Really important. I think the other thing, Laura, is you really don't need that long, do you, to be able to do this and to do it well. And it makes a no. difference. Uh, let's just go into some car phrases. So feet. Uh, hip widths apart and just up and like Nick said last week down nice and slow yeah absolutely and like Nick said you if you can just spare um a little bit of time five minutes just running through these even that I'm giving to you now um it'll make a huge difference to performance and injury prevention okay last one 30 seconds we're just going to do some upper body work so twist round really start to get into that rotation few arm swings, both sides. And switch direction. And then just like Nick did last week, some playing of his shots, swinging them shoulders nice and open. And we're done. Okay, we're into the mobilization section. So 30 seconds, we're gonna do some reverse lunges. So feet together. Josh, am I looking into this camera at the moment? Yeah. Reverse lunge. So this, this is really like we've loosened our hips up. We've activated our glutes. We're trying now to get ourselves into like a movement that we're going to do on court. Okay, we're not going to do a reverse lunge. This is sort of, I always find easing my way into a lunge. It's a bit easier than, than a forward lunge. We're really getting that depth making sure you've got good stability. Okay, next one, we're gonna do knee to wall. So imagine if you've got a wall, great. You're just gonna bend that knee, like that front knee, like it's touching a wall. This exercise was something that I never appreciated before I started doing it. And what it does, it, loose, it basically is mobilizing your ankle and stretching your calf at the same time. If you can't mobilize through your ankle, you basically can't bend at the hip either. Let's switch legs. So once this, this exercise got added into my program, the feet, the ankle, the calves have a massive, massive effect on glutes and lower back rotation. So as silly as it sounds, you're basically still warming up your lunge here. Five more seconds. And our next lot of work is going to go into our proprioception. So the last part of Nick's ramp warm up, and we're going to go into 30 seconds of forward, uh, forward and back jumps. In fact, it won't be quite 30 seconds because that's quite a lot. So forward and back. So your feet are splitting apart, forward and back. And then from here, we'll do 15 seconds each. We're going to do sides, so scissors. So you're trying to anticipate the floor here. Jump straight up, nice and fast, but nice and light. And the next one is gonna be double footed line jumps. So over, the, over a line, both feet together. And the last one, forward and back, line jumps. So over the line, forward and back. up right that's uh i feel like it's a pretty good recap of nick's session last week did i hit it you were on last week lee did i hit a good uh recap definitely definitely and you've also obviously got your pulse raised that's for sure so you're activated <laughs> ready to go i feel like the uh i don't know where i'm looking now looking at you there uh i feel like the headphones add a little bit of that on as well <laughs> you like right there by my voice <laughs> um right so 
where shall I look? <laughs> you're, good, you're good looking so, at either. Uh, you can okay, see you at oh, either. Okay, great, okay. Um, so the next set of work is our fundamental movement circuit. Now, when I was, when I was planning this the last couple of days, I think the main three things that I was thinking about were, what do we do in squash that probably is the most fundamental part of the movement when we're, when we're playing a game of squash? And I sort of got it down to quite simply, it's only session two, standing. <laughs> so I see a lot of the guys at my club um, and obviously aimed at you guys trying to get back onto court. There's not a lot of height in the, in the standing motion on a court. There's a lot of like sitting into glutes. There's a lot of bend in the knee. Call it a bit of sogginess, really. So what we're going to try and work on is being a little bit taller. I want you to think about some pointers. And like Lee said at the beginning, my career was all about the finer details. So for anyone who's into MasterChef <laughs> or the repair shop or Great British Menu, I love all of those shows, it's about the details. And every single person who is into the details of what they do is interesting and it improves and you know it's bringing a level of dedication and improvement to everything they do so bear with me here this is about the details of standing so everything we're doing is about standing tall ribs are down the hips are tilted so I don't want to see anyone with a duck bum sticking the bum out behind you're thinking about tilting those hips down and that changes the whole posture of your body same when we're talking about those knee to walls we've got nice loose ankles now so that's all linked in the second thing is balancing we have to be able to be in a position of split lunge and we have to balance and quite often that split lunge is on a single leg we might hit all weight comes through onto the front lunge uh, front leg and the back leg is actually off the floor. So it's a lot more of a single leg sport than I think we realize a lot of the time. So balancing is number two. And the third thing is our lunge. We have to be good at lunging as a lot of those warm up exercises showed. So we have got three circuits of six minutes. Each circuit is six straight minutes of work broken into 30 seconds of lunging. 30 seconds of either balancing or standing combined. So every, every first 30 seconds of each minute is lunging, combination of, and the second is balancing slash coordination slash standing. It might sound really complicated, just follow my lead and you'll get into the rhythm of it. And we've got 90 seconds rest between each one. So six minutes. The first 30 second work, and you can see I've got a racket in my hand just because why not? Nick did last week and I copy Nick a lot, so that's cool. Um, bowling squats. Now a bowling, a bowling squat, squat or lunge is just a nice shallow lunge behind. Imagining you're giving it a bowling, a bowling ball down an alley. 30 seconds of that, just getting those lunges activated. And then I'll talk us through our uh, 30 seconds of balancing as we go through. Okay, so let's say that's enough talking, off we go. So if you want a racket, brilliant. If not, don't worry. So we're just gonna go through this and this is really just about as much depth as you wanna go. It should be quite shallow. If you were doing your bowling, let me face this camera, you'd be bowling, it would be quite shallow. And when we come to the end of this 30 seconds, we've got some marching on the spot. And here we go. So if you've been doing a little bit more, this could get, you, get your RPM up, get your cadence up. This is about staying tall, being on that T position, shoulders up, chest back, lungs and ribs down, create some space to be able to breathe and get those hips up. We've worked the range and the stability. So let's get it going. This is going to be so important, isn't it, Laura, to stop people from running through that ball? Yeah. And the next exercise, guys, so we're at 30 seconds of our lunging again. Reverse lunging. So we've just done this in our warm-up. So, again, you've either got the option to go faster or deeper or both. And not, why not stretch that racket out in front?
Our next one is a balance. Stand on our left leg, right leg out in front, arms out to the side. Get that leg as high as you can. If this is enough, that's fine. We're balancing, not everyone's great at it. Close your eyes if you're amazing. And let's switch legs. Quite hard when you're a bit breathing as well. <laughs> okay, next one, split squat. Right leg out in front. Drop up and down. Again, rack it out if you want. Let's get into that squash position. Play some outrageous counter drops. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. So just... <laughs> Rock through, bang, get in that little drop. Or if you me, little backhand flick. <laughs> okay, next one, I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> Feet together, balance on the left leg. We're gonna touch down the right foot, pick it up over a hurdle and touch it down. It doesn't seem like a lot. I've done this with guys at my club, hope none of them are on tonight, who like this. Okay, so the idea is again, nice and light. I know I'm making it look easy. Balance, touch down. Keep nice and tall through the middle. Good stuff. And we're going to switch legs. So get that left leg forward. 30 seconds of lunging out in front. Does my breathing sound horrendous? <laughs> no, you sound all right. That's all right then. I feel like uh, these noise cancelling headphones are a nightmare for that. I can't hear, my, <laughs> can't hear anything but my own voice. 10 more seconds. So if you should be feeling this now in your legs a little bit, no impact, not loads on the lungs, but you should be feeling it in your quads. Next one, right leg stand in, touch that down in front, over a hurdle in the middle, touch back. So don't want to see, that's not the point of it. Point is to stay tall, stay balanced, get on that standing leg and use your stability. Ribs down, shoulders back. Get that posture going. Next one, sumo pulsing. Feet nice and wide, pointing away. And we're just going to get into a sumo position and pulse so i know this is not exactly a lunge but the idea is really feel this in your adductors now if this is too much because this i can feel this in my adductors just come up a bit and pulse there if you can get down really helps to open the hips up as well doesn't it yeah definitely next one feet together we're going to do a shallow squat nice and shallow up into a car phrase. If you're feeling super good and you're a little bit fitter than most people, get down into a full squat and get right up nice and quick onto those calves. You can really push this to whatever level you're at. Five seconds and we're going into some straightforward lunging, switching legs. So there, now we haven't just practiced, all of that forward and back work to just go into a lunge and collapse. Stay up, get tall, come in and switch. And use your racket. Start to get your body familiar with what it feels like to get your racket out in front and keep going forward and back. You need to get up and out of the way these days, don't you? You don't want to give a stroke <laughs> away. When you're the one giving all these refs directions you do, <laughs> Left leg, guys, stand on your left leg. We're doing mini circles. Right leg out to the side. If you needed any more glute work, but this is balance and glute together. Switch sides, stand on your right. We're only gonna do 15 seconds each leg, this is tough. This will really start to help to balance legs out as well, won't it, as you become so yeah. dominant on one leg. Yeah. Definitely. And it's true what you say. Um, stop there, guys. We've got 90 seconds rest, so grab a drink. But it's, uh, 
it's true what you say you you do need to be up and out of those lunges quick you have got to be nimble and balanced to nip around people when they're in the front of the court there's no excuse anymore for putting a ball up short and then expecting the opponent to you know kind of not just go into the back of you if the shot quality isn't good or you've just stood up in the shot so definitely working on getting in and out is a good good way to think about it yeah, and you see when players are good at moving in and out, they're, they're so sharp, aren't they? And they start to punish people when they get stuck in those areas because they s- skip around them and then hit out and then they leave them in big, big trouble. Yeah, it's like you, you're trying to promote the reward, aren't you, even these days, to make people go round so that you can expose that poor movement. They stand up in the shot, the distance to cover is so much is so much bigger from sort of front front backhand to back forehand if someone isn't getting out of the shot and recovering back to the tee. Yeah, definitely. I've I've always I, you know this is not the opinion of every coach. Obviously, my opinion always was that squash is a movement sport where you hit balls because if you can't get the ball back, it doesn't matter how good the shot quality is. So whereas other people see it as a ball hitting sport where you move. And I think it's it's a subtle change of phrase makes a makes a really big difference to the mindset. My mindset was if I can move well, I can get Shabini, El Walili's, Camille's shots back. And then I have to be good enough to execute my own shots. And if I can do that for longer than them, that'll win me matches. A lot of people are more if I get the ball in short and that's a winner and it's a winner, but the game is so fast these days that it's really tough to do that over the course of a a match. Okay. We are nearly done with that rest. We're into set two. Can't believe how quick that was. I should have kept you talking, (laughs) shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. Set two guys. We are in with a lunge hold with the right leg. Okay, so this, I, I think this is going to be the toughest set. I wanted us warmed up. I'm just playing for time here now. Don't worry. <laughs> I wanted us warmed up. I wanted us activated. This is probably going to be the toughest in terms of lunges. And then the third one is also tough, but a little bit kind of less leggy, I hope. So let's go for it. So right leg out in front, 30 seconds. Off we go. Rack it out. So you've got options here. How low do you want to go? How far do you want to have that racket out in front? And if that's too tough, bring the racket in. Stand up a tiny bit, save your legs. If you want to go down... working at your own level, isn't it? And then building that up. Yeah. You know, and if you do replay this session, every hopefully every time, it should just get that little bit deeper. Okay, we're up into stand on your left leg. Hold your racket like this at each end. We're just going to do a single leg RDL. This is a complete balance exercise. Now, the key here is to keep those hips nice and level. So from the side, if you can only get your foot to there and you start wobbling, that's fine. If you can get it right back and you've got good balance, go for it. Okay, switch legs, guys. Right, le- uh, Left leg out in front. Nice and deep or as deep as you feel is comfortable. And we're just going to hold. That was a tough combo. (laughs) A lunge hold and then I've asked you to stabilise. But again, all really good stuff, really good balance work. I think it's it's very noticeable how controlled you are with it all as well. So it's not fast or rushed. It's about, like you say, the attention to detail and making sure you get the little bits right each time. Yeah. Um, We're coming into our stand on our right leg. Hold the racket and go back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody always says, don't they? In every sport, learning technique, karate kid, wash on, wash off. <laughs> Slight, sl- slowly, slowly drill those neural pathways, make your body understand what you're trying to do. But quite often with technique as well, you can't actually see the faults when the swing's too big. Ask a player to slow down and hit balls into service boxes a lot harder next one reverse lunge with a reach above the head so you are pressing that racket above your head get that reverse lunge going this is all to really get us staying tall so the last thing I want to do is a reverse lunge and just collapse in my shoulders and my upper back this makes me reach it makes my shoulders stay back makes my ribs stay long 
and it makes me use my legs equally. And as soon as you lose control and collapse forwards, that's when you see people running through and not being able to stop. And, and then, of course, the court becomes massive, doesn't it? Let alone not being able to control the shot. Yeah, definitely. OK, guys, let's put our rackets down. Next one is our march, like we did at the very start. But this time's a pause at the top. Foot down, pause, pause. So what you're doing here is going a little bit quicker on the raise and holding. And I don't know about you, but I've got ankle shakes <laughs> and glute shakes, trying to stabilize that speed as it comes up. Which just shows how much you're working to really keep that height. Stay tall, ribs long, shoulders back. Good stuff. Next one is a 12 o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock lunge. So we're going to go forward, grab your racket again, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock. Left leg stays completely pinned, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock. And we're staying tall, shoulders up, knee over shoe. Don't Where's your focus when you come out of the shot, Laura? So when you push off? Using height here on this standing leg. Come off, use the standing leg. Activate the standing leg, I think. Okay, from here, we're going to stand on our left leg and we're going to tap forward, tap three o'clock, tap six o'clock. So it's a bit the same thing, bit of a balance with our racket in the hand. So I don't want to see anyone just giving up like this. I want you to stop, stop, forgot to start my watch. Stay tall. So again, you've got, imagining you've got a little pickup of a hurdle like that. So you're not just sliding your foot round really quick, pointlessly. This is about balance, rhythm, stepping. Okay, we've done a bit, a bit longer there. So we're going to switch to the other side. We've got a 12 o'clock, left leg, 9 o'clock, left leg, 7 o'clock, left leg. And yeah, it's a really good point, Lee, because um, I am really thinking weight here, weight here. Weight on the left leg, weight on the right leg. So the legs are getting used a little bit more equally than maybe you would think. Yeah, but I think most people would be thinking that it's your leg that you've lunged out will be doing all the work and it's not yeah. the case when you're doing this. No, you want to use that leg to help you get out and then this one snaps up. So as a quick demo, snaps up and then you keep that height. Next one, as we just did, standing on the right leg, forward, lateral, six o'clock. Pick that foot up. Stay tall. Knee should only bend when you put the foot down. Keep it nice and activated. Seven seconds left. And our next one is going to be side lunges, and that's our last one. Okay, so 15 seconds each side, guys. Start with the right leg. I think key point here is hips up, hips activated. Knee doesn't come over the foot any further than that. Don't want to see this. Throw that leg at your own pace. And we're going to switch legs. You've just Off got to make go. sure you get your landing foot slightly far enough out, don't you? Yeah. There's a reason this is number six of our second circuit. Hoping... I've drilled you all in on foot placement, height, balance. You all know what I'm after now. And it's a shame I can't see you because I'd be calling people out. <laughs> okay, last one is a knee to rack it down. We've got a knee to chest, hold. And switch, hold. So a little, a little shuffle in between is fine. Get up on that balanced leg and hold it. 
So you're trying to stay that. tall again, aren't you? So there's a lot of balance going on, but you're staying very tall again through the body as well as sort of thinking about the ankles and the, the sort of standing foot. Definitely. And I, I know that you guys can't see what I'm feeling, but my thing is as soon as this leg comes up and I have to hold the, gl the glue on the standing leg here is hurting <laughs> and stop. Not hurting, firing and it's, it's working and that feels, that feels really good. So 90 seconds, let's grab a drink. You can talk, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just think, uh, you know, I've seen you do this a number of times, obviously when you're playing and warming up and stuff. And it just, it's so important in terms of everything we've spoken about. You know, there's the injury pr prevention, but more importantly, there's there's the performance that people can will start to see the benefits from because there's nothing worse than running through the ball and and losing control of the lunge because you can't hit the ball well, you can't control it and have accuracy and and options and everything that you want and and then you're also charging through, sort of bouncing off a wall and then having to sprint a whole length again. You've got no control of yeah. your of your movement. Yeah, I think the thing is is about trying to hold the T as much as you can stay as close to the T as you can the point of doing the lunges so that you exactly what you were saying really so you're not just thinking oh I'm in a lunge position I'll hit the ball and then I'll just do that that's completely pointless the idea is keep your back leg back hit your shot stand your front leg back to your back leg and get back to the T get back to where you want to come from uh right we have got one more round just checking we're okay for time. Yeah, we're good. You're it. not getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. Okay, so set three, guys. Um, we're starting off as our first 30 seconds as a side-to-side -side lunge. Just before we get in, playing for that extra 30 seconds of time, this would be me arguing with the ref, and then probably getting fined after. Side-to-side <laughs> um, -side lunges. <laughs> Staple of my strength and conditioning program. And I'd never done this again before I worked with Mark. I just want to quickly take you through it. Feet as wide as they can go. Which camera am I on? This one, uh, this one yeah. Um, feet pointing out 45 degrees. You're going to stay static in the middle, meaning your feet are going to stay static and you're going to drop in. Up, drop in. Okay, so let's go and I'll talk you through why uh, that's, this is so good. So drop in. Now, if, you're, if you can't see the tip of your toe, your feet aren't wide enough. So it would look like this. That's not doing anyone any good. Feet nice and wide, drop in. Should feel this on the glute, in the glute and in the adductor. And this is all about range. This is, a, you know, how many times do you see this? That's all that adductor. So uh, next one. We've got racket down, quad stretch and hold. So similar to the last one, walk, hold that quad stretch. So the same one, hold, balance, but you're doing it with the quad stretch, which is not a bad warm-up exercise, to be honest, as well as uh, balance. I think the other thing with the knee, Laura, is it's, it's protected. If you're not bending your knee over your foot and you you're able to protect the knee a bit, aren't you? Whereas you, you do it a bit of damage if, if you don't yeah. get your foot out far enough. Definitely. But it does take flexibility, timing, and working on that range to get that. And that is a perfect exercise to do it. Okay, guys, we're going to do a forward back lunge, right leg. So lunge on the right leg, come back to the middle, lunge on the back leg, uh, right leg on going back. Now, the thing is here... If you cannot put your foot down in the middle, I'd love that. Up, balance, come forward. Up, balance, go back. If you have to, just work up to it. But you're almost thinking about that little hurdle in the middle. The higher you are, the more force goes into the floor, the more force helps you back out of the floor. The lower you come, the force disappears and you have no help back out. Okay, next one. Forward back scissors, like we just did in the warm up. Off we go. Nice and light, nice and tall. 
thinking about keeping length in those hip flexors and through your knees. Five seconds. And stop. Grab your racket, left leg. Let's go. So again, forward lunge, up, backward lunge. How you feel it, have a play around. How does it feel to stay tall in the middle in comparison to just swinging that leg back low? Certainly the one thing I notice is my distance of lunge changes completely and my lightness, my heaviness, because the floor is helping me get back out. And then straight away, if you're thinking about a game, it's about the, the anchored leg, the back leg, doing a bit of work for you, isn't it? Not just yeah. all on your lunging leg. That standing leg is doing a huge amount on them forward back. Okay, we've got lateral scissors next. There's your split step and go. Yep, there you go. You can talk about that for 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what you're right, like there. And stop. Okay, we're going to leave our racket on the floor, actually. We're going to do a reverse lunge to high knee. Switching legs each time. So reverse lunge, high knee, hold. Foot down, hold. Nice and deep. And again, if you're feeling great here, why not do a, one of these? Repeat a hop. Hop up. I think the other thing to notice is there's almost like an elastic rebound from you. So when you go into a, into a lunge, whenever you go, throw a leg out, there's always, it wants to spring back, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's that elasticity that I work really hard on in my career. Like, it's like that when you're in a lunge, you've got a stretch this way and a stretch that way. So you feel like you're being pulled, hit a shot, go. So it should help you off. Okay, got a little bit of extra rest there. Sorry. Uh, stand on left leg. Right leg goes back behind, mini RDL. Pulse that back leg. Balancing, working glute. That looks a tough one to balance. And switch legs. I mean, if you literally can't get your feet foot that high off the floor, no problem. If you can get right forward, Let's do it. Stop. Last two. We've got a curtsy lunge. So this is right across, almost like a curtsy. <laughs> Just really there, firing up that glute, getting a bit of range in those hips. I thought I've done well to design a session with 18 different lunge types, you know. <laughs> Anyone Definitely. impressed by that? <laughs> I reckon there's going to be some people with very, very sore glutes. Yep. But better to just do it nice and controlled. That's inevitable if you're a squash player. That's going to happen no matter what. So let's do it. Let's get it out. And then we can be fit and strong by Monday. Okay. Last one. of the Because this is the same. So we're going to stand on our right leg. I want you to put nice and tall. Pretend you're doing high volleys. That's hard because I'm rocking you now. So if you've just got a little tap, that's fine. The bigger the motion of the arm, the harder it is. Keep those ribs down. You can feel this in my ankle and my glute. So Laura, Stay we've tall. had a question come in from, from Talisha and she was At saying last. that when, <laughs> when, when you mentioned about the... Um, the movement with the hitting rather than hitting with movement added on. Is there a specific way that you trained for that? And are there any examples of players that thought about it the other way around? Yeah. Okay, good. Great question. Let's just finish this last one. 45 degree angle lunges. So feet together, nice and tall, switch legs out to a 45 degree. Should have my racket in my hand. So I think the answer to the question is this sort of stuff fine detail of understanding movement and understanding what's going to hurt my opponent. When the tin dropped to 17 inch for the women, if you didn't adapt your movement and find a way to get more elastic at the front and be able to cover that extra distance that the tin creates at the front, you were in real trouble. 
Okay, we're standing on left leg now. Last one, up high. Nice and tall. I would say a good example of someone the other way around, not massively thinking of movement, but all shot. Tell me if I'm wrong, Lee. Annie Al. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so like all about that shot has to go there now. I'm not thinking about how if it comes back, what I've got to do to get it back. Uh, she's someone that springs really to mind. Renee Walili towards the end, five seconds, was all about the movement, even though she was unbelievable at her shots. And she's told me, and her coach has told me that she's worked on that. Stop. Um, we're done. <clears throat> I'm not even taking my jacket off because it's freezing in here, <laughs> but I'm actually quite warm now. So, uh, yeah, that would that would be my take just before we wrap, wrap up on that question. Annie Al, someone who's very, very square, got to get very close to the ball, leaves a lot of gaps on the court. But if you can't expose those gaps, her quality of shots unbelievable. So I would say that that's a good example, I think. And to be honest, the lower down your rankings you go on the men and the women, I think that becomes more apparent. She was someone who was unbelievably accurate. So that was really rare to get that high and only think about the shot, I think, personally. Um, there's, an, there's another so there question go. come in as well, Laura, from Tim. Yeah. Tim said, said he's going to use a lot of this, but he was asking, what's your best tip when you're feeling fatigued and struggling a bit? So do you, do you rise above it and carry on or, or can you find some more or...? It totally depends and um, it depends on why you're fatigued, I think. First, first point is, are you fatigued physically or are you fatigued mentally? And if you're fatigued physically and therefore struggling to get up for it mentally, push through. If you're fatigued mentally, then you need a break and you need to take a bit of time off. And I was always a really big believer that you should be absolutely chomping to go on the bit, uh, chomping back on the bit to go back on court and hit balls. And if you're not, then you're not really ready to learn and you're not really ready to really improve yourself. And then, and then it's counterproductive. Whereas training when you're tired, you know, they're the sort of times you have to train when you're in a tournament, winning 3-2, coming through. British Open sticks out for me 2017 when I won it, beating Raneem 3-1, coming back from 2-0 down against Shabini and thinking, how am I going to play well against Sarah Jane Perry in the final? I'm shattered. And you can really draw upon all of those moments where you've really gathered yourself in training and have, you've done that. And that gives you a huge amount of confidence. So if you just, without being harsh, wimp out and don't bother when you're tired physically, you never get those bonuses of, of, of that confidence. Um, but mentally is a different thing. I've also been very mentally tired. A fog comes down. You can't really think about what you want to do on court. And really, you just need, Danny Danny used to say to me, you need, if you were a horse, you'd be put in the field to rest for, <laughs> for three weeks. Uh, he didn't try and do and that to you, did he? He didn't try and get you he out He tried, so it'd, be cheap, so it'd be cheaper out in the field. But <laughs> So um, I, think, I think it's important to try and be honest and try and understand why you're tired. Okay, there's another that question. Fatum asked, um, how many times in a week would you look to do this as part of your schedule? Or should they look to do it? Honestly, guys, this uh, this is some. I've just put this together tonight for you. Honestly, um, a lot of these exercises I've done before. Um, a lot of them are mobility exercises for me as professional. So it would be going through glute circuit activation. Sometimes my warm ups with Mark, my physical trainer, when I was pro, were a good half an hour, 35, 40 minutes before I even started my squash. And that's very unique to being a professional. So. If you can take some of this work and add in five minutes with some of Nick's, five minutes of Nick's, five minutes of this potentially, 10 minute warm up, you're in. If you want to do the full session, start to build this in and start to add weight. Add in, so, so you've got your split squats, add in some weight. You've got your single leg RDLs, balances like that. I do that with 10 kilos in my hand. That'll absolutely wreck your hamstrings. Don't try that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um so it's, it's building up. And if you do it with weights and you want to get strengthened in these positions, I would say a couple of times a week is plenty. But if it is a warm up every time before you play, if that's not too much. Yeah, it's about accumulating little and often. Build it up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Great. I think that's it. So thank you so much for, for your time and effort. 
no worries I'll hand back to you to close off and thank you very much really enjoyed it hope everyone else did too and uh, enjoy the rest of the series yeah great session well, as Laura mentioned, we will be back on Monday. I think we've got Nathan Wells joining us, who's our strength and conditioning expert. So he'll have some really good tips. You'll be able to sign up via the Squash Fit Hub as well. So hopefully you'll all be able to join us and you can always catch up. There's there's the link in the chat as well if you need it to, to be able to click that and then go directly there to sign up. So um, join us on monday at six o'clock that's it from myself and laura we hope you really enjoyed the session and we'll look forward to seeing you on monday for more squash fit brought to you by england squash see you then <laughs>